Whittier's relationship with his sister Elizabeth is vital to him. She was an independent-minded, talented and published writer and a member of the Anti-Slavery Society. As soulmate for Whittier, her death in 1864 affected him greatly, leaving him alone and lonely in his Amesbury home. These elements and events were the catalysts for the poem Snowbound. In 1866, Snowbound was published, making Whittier famous and earning him $10,000, the most money he ever made on a book. With the success of Snowbound in 1867, Whittier attains for the first time applause for his work. He becomes a household name and a national hero. Written after the end of the Civil War, Snowbound happened to be the perfect medicine for an exhausted nation. It is a poem about memory. Shut in from all the world without, we sat the clean-winged hearth about, content to let the north wind roar in baffled rage at pain and door. While the red logs before us beat the frost line back with tropic heat, and ever when a louder blast shook beam and rafter as it passed, the merrier up its roaring draught, the great throat of the chimney laughed. The house dog, on his paws outspread, laid to the fire his drowsy head. The cat's dark silhouette on the wall, a couchant tiger's seemed to fall. And for the winter fireside meet, between the andirons straddling feet, the mug of cider simmered slow, the apples sputtered in a row, and close at hand the basket stood with nuts from brown October's wood. To study the chronological order of Whittier's poems from The Exile's Departure, written in 1825, to Snowbound, 40 years later, is to watch the steady broadening and clarifying of Whittier's spirit. Whittier settles back into more of a literary career. A great deal of his time is spent mentoring women writers. Among those with whom he spent a great deal of time were Celia Thaxter, Sarah Orne Jewett, and Lucy Larcom. There were evening gatherings in Boston at the home of his publisher, James Fields of the Atlantic Monthly, as well as trips to the Isles of Shoals. There were many paradoxes in Whittier's life, which demonstrates his complexity and courage. He fell in love with many women, but never married. He supported abolition and ultimately came to believe in the inevitability of the Civil War, despite his pacifism. He appreciated soldiers and admired their work, regardless of his pacifism notwithstanding his solitariness and repeated illnesses, he worked to become a politician at the national level. Home, family, nature, New England roots are critical to Whittier's being. They all served as a touchstone, refuge, and identity. His home became a place of warmth and compassion for him. 
a place where he could find respite from the public and have time to write. Born into poverty, Whittier was able to use a meager education to cultivate his abilities. With perseverance, he became a well-known literary figure, abolitionist, women's rights advocate, and politician. Whittier's Quaker beliefs guided his approach to his literary work, his zeal for abolition, his belief in women's rights, and his political initiatives. The distinct idiom in much of his poetry and prose symbolized his belief in a human community. Created equal, under God, to be preserved peacefully, without distinction of color, creed, class, or gender.